Do you have a point? You'd like to follow the funding subcommittee meeting of the social resilience technical advisory committee to order. First item on the agenda is roll call. Okay. Uh, so from VRA, we have Sean Humlish and Peter uh, Dilemma. Here. Okay. Hampton Road Planning District Commission, Ben McFarlane or Whitney Katzmark. Middle Peninsula Planning District Commission, Louis Lawrence or Curtis Smith. Yeah, Louis. VDEM, Robbie Coates or Deborah Metzmer. They said they weren't able to attend. From the Virginia Chamber of Commerce, Keith Martin, Kristen Gerhoff, or Ethan Betterson. Kristen's here. And then from uh, Virginia Department of Housing and Community Development, Bill Curtis. Here. Virginia Department of Transportation, Chris Swanson or Christopher Berger. Here. Virginia Marine Resource Commission, Claire Gorman. And Virginia Sea Grant, Troy Hart. Claire is in the waiting room. Kevin Hi, Claire. Can you hear us? Did we get Troy? I know he's not here, but are we done with roll call? I'm sorry, yeah, we are sorry. Um, and uh, but Claire did not hear us. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it looks like her audio is connected now. Okay. All right. Everyone is, we have roll call complete and she can hear us. So we have two members online. So, Matt, you're going to describe today's agenda before we adopt it. Yeah, just a change in the agenda. Um, we moved the public comment up in front of new business today. That if there are any members in the public here, they can provide any comment before the voting happens on the recommendations. Uh, but other than that, uh, the business as usual go through the agenda, meeting minutes, adoption, quick overview of the subcommittee, quick update on the Coastal Resilience Advantage Plan, and then we'll discuss the subcommittee recommendations, public comment. Then we will be voting on the recommendations and two minor. Updates on schedule. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, any comments on the meeting minutes from Q3? Uh, motion to adopt uh, meeting minutes. So moved. Second. All in favor, say aye. aye. Thank you. Any old business? We have seven minutes. We'll go to the fire. So I have 10 minutes. Yeah. All right. Uh, just a quick kind of refresher of what we're here for for the Coastal Resilience Master Plan, uh, the phase two effort due out at the end of this calendar year. Uh, which encompasses the eight coastal EDCs. This plan is meant to be a trusted resource to assist uh, state government entities, whether it's local or regional, to help make more evidence-based decisions to try to mitigate severe repetitive flooding. The plan itself provides baseline analysis and forward-looking analysis uh, of where flooding can be in our region from coastal flooding, riverine flooding, and rainfall-driven flooding what those impacts could be. And that also looks to collect an inventory of what resilience actions are underway or planned or are needed so that we can better coordinate moving forward. This funding subcommittee, uh, these are the objectives that we worked on um, almost six meetings ago, a year and a half ago, really trying to inform the quantification of the financial need for flood resilience, what kind of funding needs are needed, which could help guide 
appropriation, also working to identify and examine the different financial tools and processes uh, that are suited to help implement flood resilience, and then identify some of the challenges and opportunities to implement financial tools. Uh, lastly, the objective of the subcommittee is to work on the recommendations that will be the, the key part of today's meeting uh, to advise what the DCR can do, getting moving forward in this five-year planning cycle, as well as other uh, responsible parties to help address flood resilience uh, in the Commonwealth Court, really in the coastal region. So just a review of our schedule. Um, this is our last, this is our Q4 meeting of 2024 and the last subcommittee meeting uh, that we have. Uh, and today we need to work on getting our final recommendations uh, voted out. So any wordsmithing or updates, improvements, enhancements to the language, this is the time to do it before we send these recommendations out and put them before the full tech, uh, which is meeting uh, next month in the uh, Just a quick update on where we're at with the Coast Resilience Master Plan. Um, we are working to the, the impacts analysis, the flood analysis is completed. We've collected our inventory. We are actively working on putting the plan document together. Uh, so that it can be released at the end of the year. We're also updating the Coastal Resilience Web Explorer. And then we will also have additional data that's supporting that Explorer and the plan available for access as well. So it's kind of a, a three-part approach to delivery. The plan document will have kind of key takeaways and highlights relative to the funding subcommittee, some new additions um, in this phase two effort are the more indirect financial impacts from flooding. So looking at the impacts on economic outputs or GDP and how that, uh, how different types of flooding are impacting different regions uh, and the scale of those impacts. We're seeing a lot of rainfall driven impacts up in Northern Virginia, uh, and those are the primary economic impact driver, uh, while down uh, in Hampton Roads is primarily impacted by coastal flooding, and that's the larger portion of the overall GDP for the overall plan, but we also have numbers within each uh, PDC region, what is the relative impacts from coastal flooding and rainfall-driven flooding. We do not have economic impacts from riverine flooding because we only have one uh, flood frequency, the 100-year event. It doesn't allow us to do uh, calculate average annualized losses, which are direct impacts from structures, which is the basis for the overall economic impacts. So we have coastal economic impacts and rainfall-driven uh, economic impacts. Uh, and then, Will, do you need me to unmute? Not okay. The other addition that we're looking at for this plan are uh, tax base implications and looking at um, with sea level rise and potential permanent inundation of lands that would no longer be um, habitable if those the land and structures are coming off of the tax revenue how much what is the overall percentage of revenue that is could be lost in that locality and then looking at what would the rest of the remaining properties and structures what additional taxes could they have to pay to make up for this? Look at it overall. So, so did they add that into the plan to get out some new value in this effort? Uh, so, that information will be coming out shortly at the uh, at the end of this year. Any questions on the plan itself or the updates relative to the funding subcommittee? All right, hearing none, then we're going to move into uh, recommendations development discussion. And I'm going to hand it over to Linda, who's going to. Great. Thanks for being here. Um, so we have two members online. Is that correct, Willard? So Claire and Kristen are online, I believe. 
So Claire and Kristen, I just ask that you unmute whenever you can and be part of everyone in this room. We're having one committee discussion, subcommittee discussion today. And what we'd like to do is focus on the word smithing piece for the five recommendations so that they can go forward by the end of this meeting. And the way we'll do that, we will go through the five all at once just to kind of take a preview. And most of you are in this room. Does everybody have a copy of over there? Okay, here you go. And there's, another, there's more over there. Um, everyone's got a copy. As well for, for Claire and Kristen, you would have received um, a file from Matt when he sent out the meeting invite or reminder, and you should be able to find that online. We will also share it some as we're going through. So we're going to take a quick preview of the five. Then what we're going to do is go back to A. They're not in any particular priority, but they're, they are lettered A, B, C, D, and E. We'll go and we'll focus on A. In the end of the day, you are voting just on the recommendation itself, but there is a purpose next to that recommendation that will be included in the report. So we wanna make sure that the purpose is also saying what you need it to. Once we're done looking at recommendation A and looking at the different comments that came in at TAC, and that's what's on those sheets that we handed out, then we will move on to recommendation B, talk through that one and so forth. We have about 20 minutes if we need it for each recommendation to be able to finalize. In the end, once we've gone through those five, we're going to go back again briefly and just take a look. And at that point in time, when we go back, we are also going to ask you about the purpose. So if you have comments, you want to change the purpose on the way, no problem. It's just that we want to focus most of our time on the recommendation to be sure we get through them all. Once that process is done, everyone's comfortable with the languaging, then we'll turn it back over for the, um, for the voting part. And Sean's gonna leave the voting part. Wheel is going to help with something called Mentimeter. And we'll be doing the voting in Mentimeter, but we'll show you how to do that. And it's pretty easy to do. So for everyone in person, as well as um, for Claire and Kristen online, we'll do the voting, just one person per organization. Any questions about anything? Okay. I do want to add in, um, Troy Hartley was unable to attend the meeting today, but he did submit a few comments on a recommendation. Uh, so when we get to that, we will uh, just read out his comments that would be considered. Great. Which one was, did he give comments? Uh, recommendation B. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. So with that, we'll go on to the first recommendation. We're just going to take a quick breeze through them. I will read them aloud just to give you a chance to think about them. First one, state agencies to provide financial tools and reports to local governments, state legislators, and other official entities that clearly demonstrate the immediate and midterm costs of inaction to address flood resilience. Let's go on to the next one. The economic development community should ensure that businesses, government officials, citizens, and other stakeholders are aware of the economic benefits of local development with water, as well as support for developing and exporting Virginia-based flood resilient solutions to an emerging global market. For C, we have the interagency resilience management team should monitor and share existing and available flood resilience financial funding and financing resources to support local, regional, and statewide initiatives. For D, we have the DCR Office of Resilience Planning should identify the different financial needs specific to the private sector and to the public sector. And for E, state agencies should monitor and evaluate the success of the state funding, including appropriations and grants and loan programs to address short-term and long-term challenges and consider. A, is, yeah. is, is the screen still being shared? Yes. You're sharing in the room, but you got to oh, share sorry. it. Oh, sorry. 
Sorry, let me share that. So as we, we're gonna go through this and they've got the recommendations on a Word document that we have track changes on. So we'll work through those changes in real time so that people online can see what those were, that new text looks like. You'll also see the new text on the screen as well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Claire, Kristen, can you see it? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the, the fifth and last of the group. State agencies should monitor and evaluate the success of the state's funding, including appropriations and grant and loan programs, to address short-term and long-term challenges and consider additional financial mechanisms that may be needed to address longer-term challenges such as strategic relocation, saltwater intrusion into public drinking water systems, and infrastructure abandonment. So those are the five as they are right now. That gives you a kind of a preview. Um, we'll go back to the very first one. And Sydney in the room in just a moment, well, when we do start to talk about changes, she'll be typing them and track changes until we get to the point that we are solid. Once you're solid, then she'll accept those changes. Okay, so you'll be able to see. So let's take a look. And when we look at this first recommendation, what was it that came up during the TAC meeting? So during the TAC meeting, there was discussion of cost of inaction. And there was a question, do we actually mean state agencies as a responsible party in this recommendation? Who does the oversight, financial auditing, et cetera? And I think those are the main points that you want to consider, plus anything else that's come up for you. Let's dive into this recommendation. So what are your thoughts about the general meaning of this recommendation? What is it you want to want to portray? And is it doing that? I, I think it does it if you understand the interrelationship between state government and local government, since local governments are administrative arms of the state government. And staying in that position, only the state government, the state, the biggest unit of government is ultimately responsible for pushing information or, or drawing out information from the smaller administrative arms of the state. Okay. And so in that context, it reads correctly. Where you run into trouble is where people that read it that don't understand that relationship between the administrative arms of this bigger unit of government and the relationship to the smaller unit of government. My only, just taking that a little further, if you, when you use the generic term state agencies should kind of something that we heard at the PAC meeting is can we, who, who is that? No one's stepping forward to volunteer to start producing reports unless it's already within their mm -hmm. um, operational plan, et cetera. So uh, could, could we zero in on like the new position of the chief resilience officer or the office of the chief resilience officer? You can, officer? and and some of the other, so we've had two subcommittee meetings already. And just to give you an idea of the starts of the sentences of the recommendations, in some cases it was DCR office of resilience planning. In some cases it said the Commonwealth, the chief resilience officer should, State agencies should another DCR Office of Resilience Planning. So thinking about those options, if you want to say the Chief Resilience Officer should, if that fits here, you can. Yeah, and, and that's sort of a general, I, I think we do it again in recommendation app, just when you say state agencies mm -hmm. should, it's just a black hole. Well, how, um, and I do agree with the black hole concept, how do you then address the ability for the chief resiliency officer to be able to reach across the secretary to another state agency and draw that information out. Right. It's a very defined role of the CRO is supposed to be the hub. Yeah. And cross the secretary in order to get that information. Does it, what about the inverse? Is there the responsibility for those agencies to respond to the request? Yeah. And, and if it is, if that's there for the responsiveness component, then that works. 
could we call on the IRMT like we do in recommendation C? That's got PRO involvement and state agency representation. So the interagency resilience management team and interagency resilience management team. So the, or the IRMT incorporates the CRO and others automatically. Yeah, I think okay. the uh, the interagency resilience management team is established under the Office of the Commonwealth Resilience, directed by the CRO, and convenes the public body, which is the RFI. So I think it would capture both of those. I'd like the CRO and the state agency. Because that would ensure the black hole has light coming from both directions, which is mm -hmm. what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. So rather than say CRO, you're suggesting to say the interagency resilience management team. Is that correct? Right. I thought it was, that was, I thought it was both. both. Yeah, right. It's both directions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the CRO is part of. Part of. Yeah. Yeah. So I think if we just say the IRMT, we would capture it. It captures the CRO and a subset. Okay. And RMT is interagency resilience management team. The well, team. unless you think that this is that we'll check out how the CR. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, the, the <laughs> CRO chairs the interagency resilience management team, each agency has a resilience coordinator. Okay. So the CRO is going to ensure that they're doing what they ought to be doing, what they're tasked with doing. Is, is that what you're saying? Then, yeah, I, think Matt, I think Matt knows them. Yeah, I'm just trying to, it, I mean, it, you've probably been involved with the development of the office. I mean, what's the most appropriate? Yeah. The level of authority of the CRO over the team, I think it's coordination. I don't know if there's a shall in there that mm -hmm. state agency shall that or that the CRO shall direct <laughs> members of the interagency management team to do, but it is they are the coordinator, right? But whether they have a stick or a carrot, you don't know that that's. Do we? Does someone need to describe kind of the what each is? So the interagency resilience management team is a represents. Matt, is that something you can describe? The interagency resilience management team. Mm -hmm. Or, and then also describe just in general, the CRO would do, um, and then any other group that you might be thinking about, just so that you're clear on what their roles are. And that way you can decide, you know, maybe it's the interagency resilience management team um, in coordination with the CRO. All agencies of the Commonwealth shall assist the chief resilience officer in the discharge of his duties upon request. So the CRO can request this coordination action. And then the interagency resilience management team is composed of state agents and you know, the resilience coordinator. So who's going to be actually writing the reports? So for this recommendation, to provide financial tools and reports to local governments, those these reports that we're speaking of in the recommendation, if the CRO directs an agency to provide a report, from my interpretation of what's here in code, they need to be responsive to that provided. And the team is composed of all the state agencies. Not all, almost uh, the, many. The, the, the yeah. ones that are specifically designated. Right. But what I was uh, thinking of is, is who's actually who has the authority and who has responsibility mm -hmm. and capability. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Okay. So who has the authority in this case? Zero. Zero. And then responsibility. 
the state agencies. State agencies are part program. of the team. Mm -hmm. And then the, the knowledge would come also from the state agencies as being part of that team? Well, they know they have responsibility, they have membership on the team, and they represent the agencies, so they have to provide the, the information. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and should it be should or will? Or shall? I mean, I mean, the I think report can't dictate. Yeah, most the other two subcommittees we have used the should and not shall. Mm -hmm. Yes, all of them are should. Well, if he has that authority, isn't it shall? Then, then we're dictating what the CEO will yes. do. So the theme of, if you look at the language, I guess, of this report, so the theme is about the should piece as a guide versus a, a shall as a directive. Well, it really depends on who you're talking about, who leads this sentence here, right? Right now we have to say R-R-E-T. If it's a DCR, then it could be shall. Right. Well, maybe it's the CRO should direct the interagency management to yeah. provide that strong that language. Yeah, I like that. Since these are all these are called recommendations versus I don't know what you would call a rule or a that makes sense that you just did it with a should and a direct. Right. So the chief resilience officer should direct the interagency resilience management team to provide financial tools and reports to local government. Any thoughts? Anything you could not support with this language? Is there anything you think that could enhance it? Make it stronger? As a thought, I would say that in order for them to do this, they have to have information from the uh, state legislatures and other official entities so that they can tell local jurisdiction others so what the uh, the comp the cost will be. If they don't have that information, they can't do it. <clears throat> so uh, I would think that these recommendations will have a lot of steps to be able to complete them, yeah. right? One thing that comes to my mind, I don't know how to address it, but just some time component would be helpful as a state agency. Is it expected annually? Is it expected as new information is made available that you know, it's digestible and pertinent. Um, Especially in its relationship to the budget. Right. You want to do it in advance of the budget, right? If there's mm -hmm. going to be some action. It's just, it's out there. Right. Yeah. Uh, when am I supposed to do this? Well, the, the predicate in the sentence is the cost of inaction. And so the way that this is structured is it's recognizing that there is an inherent risk that is jeopardizing some financial aspects to the ability for local governments to function. So the emphasis is on the cost of the inaction and the CRO and the IRNT are supposed to be the knowledge base to be able to say to local governments, this cost of inaction. The way, Chris, that you had laid that out, that, that would assume that they would be doing things beyond the cost of inaction. So to, I think to correct what you were saying, you would have to change it away from the cost of inaction because that is a specific function. It is related to singularly the cost of inaction. Right, so maybe if I'm understanding you, one could read that if we do it one time, here's the cost of inaction, mm -hmm. we fulfilled it, we're done. That is one way right. you could say it is built. 
I mean, there's always the like do nothing option. Mm -hmm. And I, right now, I don't think the, the world understands what the cost of the do nothing option. So it's easy to, to default to that. So th this would create the tools and information that would quantify the do nothing option, which may be a one, if you could, if someone can create a framework and it's one time that everyone can use, fantastic. Well, the first two parts of it are plural, tools and reports. I think if you added the S to inaction, cost of inactions to address coastal resiliency, now you've kept it consistent to say that there are plural tools, plural reports, and plural cost of inactions. And that would mean that it's more than one report. Talked about that? That's why we need attorneys in here for the <laughs> statutory board construction question. Pretty clever. Cost of inactions. Uh, sound good in the room? Sure. And online? Yes. Okay, great. All right. We still didn't answer your question about timing. There's, I'll, I'll run. There's the five year planning cycle for the coastal plan. There is also a two year report cycle for the chief resilience officer to report on the status of resiliency. So those two already exist in code. So to kind of close out that point, do you want to add anything else towards timing? My only thought is that we have a biannual budget, right? And so that the reports every two years from the CRO, I would assume is in advance of the budget bill period so they can look at the cost of an act and then determine they're going to do something about it. Do you want to add that piece? That's just my thoughts. And just... mm -hmm. Help fill out in terms of thinking that yeah, through. Probably. Would you say in advance of the biannual budget? Yeah. So that way you kind of put the predicate that the purpose of this is you all need to do something before the budget, not after the budget, because then you got to wait a whole nother year. If you don't put this responsibility on the legislators, they will not take it. Well, I'm sorry, a little bit negative, but uh, right. uh, they need to be sort of uh, nudged. So you could add at the start of the sentence in advance of the biannual budget, in advance of six months in advance of, because if you wait till the end, it's too late. It's not going to happen. Um, so this is Kristen. Um, I'm just wondering how prescriptive these recommendations should be. I agree that um, it should be done before budget development starts, which generally starts, I think, in June of each year, at least internally at DPB. Um, but do we want to be prescriptive about that if maybe that gets adjusted in different administrations? Yeah, in my view, it's just a little bit more of a generic that this should be out there, but we could add, should provide timely financial soul. I mean, it's, it captures the notion of information when it's needed. Oh, okay. I, I mean, that's yeah, just, yeah. if you're taking the, I mean, here we can, to Kristen's point, we could get to the point of this report needs to be submitted, but I don't think we have, like, the actual this report concept. It's it's a little more generic in my view. Yeah, yeah I mean, we're, this is still an advisory body. Right. The TAC itself has no um, authority for the decision. It's advising ECR how to administer and develop and implement the coastal. Now, I heard you saying you don't want to be you know, too prescriptive, but uh, I still think that. Timing is important. They need to have it prior to budget development. So in a in a timely manner related to budget development, in a timely manner related to that is not how we You could add a sentence at the end and just say that the tools and report could be could be provided prior to the budget development or whatever time. That's like the enactment call to it in support of it. Okay. Yeah. So, That's all it is because they don't have to act on it. So just add in support of you're saying or add a sentence. Most 
<laughs> in support of after after a physical entity. Yeah. yeah, because if we're also providing this to local governments, they might have a different budget cycle as well. Do you not? No, everybody's on everybody's on the same. Well, same fiscal year, but different. Like for the state's got the biennial, mm -hmm. you know, that localities are doing that every year. Were you going to say something online? Okay. Um, okay, give us a give us a sentence or a phrase, anyone. So we could make a separate sentence. What are you going to suggest for a separate sentence? So we're just going to look up our objective one for the subcommittee. What funding needs should be identified in the plan, including to guide appropriations. Okay. You want to just leverage to that? Guide appropriations yeah. needs? Yeah. That makes yeah. sense? Yeah, like that. Great. Um, should we start the sentence with that? That would be the only recommendation. I think we still leave the responsible party on the front for consistency. This is Kristen. Um, I don't want to completely blow this up, but one question I have is, as I'm reading it, we're talking about providing tools and reports and information to local governments, state legislatures, legislators, and other official entities. Do we need to specifically put in there anything about providing that information to the governor's office? Because they're the ones deciding what's going to go in the governor's budget. Now, I guess you could consider them under official entities, but before you're going to inform state legislators, you're going to be, as an executive branch agency, working through the governor's office first. Isn't that the CRO's responsibility, though, to do that? To... Does the CRO report to somebody in the governor's office? Okay. Okay, great. Okay, so you're okay with it that way? Mm -hmm. um, okay, and so to guide appropriations? I mean, we can start to provide timely financial tools and then to support the appropriate, you know, budget to inform budget appropriations. Yeah, because the, like the budget appropriations may not necessarily be needed for every single one of the tools and reports. That is just one of many types of utility that may mm -hmm. be needed. Yeah. So by moving it not at the front, moving it further down in the sentence, it gives it equal balance amongst the other tools and the reports. Okay, so you, you'd say to inform, go ahead, let me say... How you want it? I think Sean Sean had it to provide timely financial tools and where was the back part of it and to inform, to inform appropriations after the end. Yeah, yeah, the end. So to to in, to guide appropriations is the language that was in the purpose, or to inform appropriations. To inform. Um, that better. Okay. Inform. To inform appropriations. Oh, I would say and in the form of appropriations. What you have to do the juice actions to address flood resilience to inform. I guess you could do that. That would be fine. It makes a difference whether you use two or one. Mm -hmm. Maybe it should be to uh, put it on this. I'll read it out loud. The chief resilience officer should direct the interagency resilience management team to provide timely financial tools and reports to local governments, state legislatures, and other official entities that clearly demonstrate the immediate and midterm costs of inactions to address flood resilience and inform appropriations. So that, be a no, that, that works well because that inform appropriations is not specific to either the General Assembly or, nor local government. And so it gives that utility both, both directions. Okay. And we will have a chance to come back to this when we go through all five in the end. Are you comfortable moving on to the next one? I'm good. Okay. Great. Recommendation B. 
For this one, comments during the task meeting, this recommendation ties to recommendation A, someone has suggested that we just worked on. Discuss with and educate the funding committee, economic community, and decision makers on the risk of job loss in communities subject to flood risk. The retaining of jobs versus the bringing in of new jobs. So the real risk of people and subsequently businesses that provide employment could flee the area due to floods and flooding impact. And need to clarify and wordsmith the phrase in here at um, kind of in the middle, it says economic benefits of local development with water. And there's some suggestions on alternative language there, how one manages water or adapting to water. That's some suggestion. So do you want to start with rephrasing or does anybody have general comments about this? This is the one that Troy did. Oh, and Troy gets the panel. Great, let's hear those. So Troy's comment um, was in the as, so, as well as support and then for developing and exporting Virginia-based resilient pollution to an emerging global market. He suggested that the tight, tightening the text a bit to say clearly that the state's economic development enterprise should directly support and fund the development and exportation of these innovative flood resilience solutions. So to make it that phrase itself? or just to talk about how to make it with that meaning? He was not providing specific language. Okay. No, I think he, he struck the word for, to kind of make it stronger. So as well as support developing and exporting. The concept of state economic development enterprise puts the, what I think, there's, there's two emphasis that the first part of the sentence need to, needs to clear up. This first one says economic development community. That can mean either public or private or both. In Troy's example, he put the emphasis on the state economic development enterprise, which I assume that he means, because I worked with him a lot on this, the capital state, meaning the government, which would be the public side of the economic development community, the EDP, work that the EDCD does, go Virginia. And so what what are the feelings of those around the table here when we say economic development community? Are we singularly limiting it to the power of the government economic development community or both public and private? Public and private or the state, right? What are your thoughts? I, I like the way Troy used economic development. What was his last term? Enterprise. Enterprise. And you can then put public and private in brackets around it to recognize that both of those two are involved with that. Uh, but by saying state, that means that it's the leadership is coming from the biggest unit of government. So we can change the word community there to enterprise and then put state before economic and public and private in parenthesis, yeah. So the state economic development enterprise, if they both public and private, should ensure. And then if you say both public and private, you can get rid of the parenthesis and just put commas around it. And it's a little better for you. We use including instead of both. Mm -hmm. And are you saying to capitalize state there? Is that where... If we're talking about the big unit of government, I think it would be capitalized. And not mean economic development in the sense of just wherever it happens across the country. In that case, is it possessive? The state's economic? And that would probably be correct. 
first is that, does everyone agree that's what you're talking about? Does that work? It's the state's economic development. And I like that because water presents a clear and present danger to the ability of local governments to generate taxable revenue. It hits every community. We use Commonwealths and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Forget how we yeah. Or Commonwealth, right? Okay. So, was there any questions about water? I think you raised that issue before. Yeah, the um, what you're what you're attempting to try to do with this, the original line of thinking is water becomes a liability, and what you're trying to do with this kind of predicate is you're turning it a wet round to be able to say no water water may be the common threat. But if you recognize that it's having economic development opportunity, then that becomes an asset. So you, you kind of flip it around. And so that's why you got to have great care with how you attach the word water um, and economic benefit, because that will be a very foreign concept to the communities like Southwest Virginia. They're not thinking right now that water is an economic development benefit to them, but it is if you recognize it's coming and you either have two choices, you either let it you become a victim of the water, or you try to do something about the problem. And I think that gets to how Freud was probably talking about, I think that's Freud's, how one manages water or adapting to water. Mm -hmm. Benefits of managing. Um, yeah, of, a ma of managing or adapting to. Is that what you're saying? And we can make two sentences for a recommendation if it's too long. And, when, and the local development, that's you, that phrase has lost its connection to the economic development because people will read that as when you're talking about land use development. So it's probably managing. Um, managing a, and adapting. A water management economy, you know, something like, like that, because that's really what you're, you're, the emphasis is, is on is the the economic engine of managing the water. I mean, I think we're trying to say a lot here. Yeah, a lot. Um, there's protections that are in place that preserve, you know, making sure that people stay there. But are we also talking about developing intellectual property that can be export, like whether it's products or engineering Science services? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, maybe so it's not local development, it's the economic benefits of products and services. So you you pivot off of the local development and you keep the emphasis on the products and service component. Um, so in, in straight up, does everyone understand what, what the purpose of the second half of that recommendation is saying? I think, Louis, you can probably describe it from what you're thinking. Like real succinctly, what don't even worry about wordsmithing. What is it? What message do you want to get across? It it is the there is an emerging water management economy that focuses on products and services. Whatever community in the U.S. owns that space will own the economic development engine. Okay, and and that's that's really if we somebody's going to get it, we should be the ones that get it. We've been living with water for hundreds of years. So in other words, if we figure out in Virginia how to deal with what's coming, how to deal with flooding, how to deal with anything related to the negative effects of water, then you will have an economic benefit to that because you figured it out and people will want to live here and others will want to copy what you do. Yep, because it becomes the direct, indirect, and induced economic develop, economic benefit. That, that keeps it in the language that the economic development world talks about. Because others might feel safe to come and live here because you figured out how to protect. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you want to phrase? Exactly what you said. <laughs> That's the story. We have to make it something. Okay. So did you want to get rid of the local development phrase? I think that's weakening. It, it, yeah. It's too abstract. Yeah. Dan, you're good at this. Yeah, here to explain it, it's almost like 
how stormwater management is using the term environmental site design. Mm -hmm. How do you integrate the management of water, balancing both the positive and negative to kind of get at that economic driver that I think you're speaking to. But it's not the management of the water, it's the products and services needed. To yeah, yeah, I don't want to say that ESD is what you're trying to say. I was just trying to draw an analogy. But Virginia right. adapting to water, going through that process and developing the products and services to do it here and then promote exporting those lessons learned elsewhere as an economic that's correct. So where the economic benefits of somebody recommended adapting to water. Um, adapting to so where the economic benefits of adapting to water. Adapting to potential impacts of water. Is that what you're saying? You're saying your work management. That, that that's the way that we refer to it within yeah. the middle that's of water management mm -hmm. okay but it only works if you include the products and services component because yeah. that becomes the economic driver not the management of the water so it's the emphasis on the output of yes. the water presents the opportunity for the development of products and services okay well do we want to say products and services instead of solutions yeah yeah the specificity is better if you Keep it there. Okay. Well, that's it. So to ensure that businesses, government officials, citizens, and other stakeholders are aware of the economic benefits of developing and exporting. Virginia-based flood resilience products and services to an emerging global market. Your emphasis there is about, because of the global and exporting, does it sound like the emphasis is on the global part? Yeah, because you've got, you got those two economic models that you're talking about. One is, is business growth, capex investment that benefits the Commonwealth. So that's internal to the middle to, to the Commonwealth. And then you've got the global, which is external. And so you want both in the perfect world, you want both. You want the companies to anchor, you want the jobs, you want the tax revenue, and then you want to export the solutions. You want to apply the solutions as needed in Virginia and then you want to export. Do you need the word so if if you remove the word and exporting, would it still say it? Because of two emerging global market. Of the economic benefits of developing Virginia-based flood resilience products and services and exporting to an emerging global market. So, it's closer. So that way you one first reads it about it's happening in Virginia, mm -hmm. and second recognizes it moves on. Further. I mean, just like the Commonwealth focuses on any other economic development area. So this like a creating a pharmaceutical manufacturing hub in Petersburg. Virginia could be the hub of water innovation. Yes. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. So that could also, Virginia, to be the hub of water innovation, could also end up in the purpose if you'd like. Replacing sporting them to creating. Yeah. We say benefits of developing and implementing Virginia-based flood, or is development sufficient? No, I think the adding of the implementing helps because it's not singularly an exporting function. You take care of your own people first and then you export. Yes. That's right. <clears throat> that makes it very clear. 
Ready to read it again? Okay. The Commonwealth Economic Development Enterprise, including public and private, should ensure that businesses, government officials, citizens, and other stakeholders are aware of the economic benefits of developing and implementing Virginia-based flood resilience products and services and exporting them to an emerging global market. You have all the pieces in there, do you agree? Um, do you, if you wanted to make it more succinct, do you need all of the pieces in the middle of businesses, government officials, citizens, and other stakeholders? Or can you summarize that with stakeholders or some other way? Or do you want to keep them separate? I think it depends on whether or not the Commonwealth resolves that this industry cluster cluster is important. And if it is important, then there is some responsibility to ensure that those that are listed know about it. Mm -hmm. They don't know about it. They can't accept it or embrace it. So it's good to keep that. Okay. Are we ready to move on to the next one? Yeah. Okay. Recommendation C. So the recommendation C. Thoughts of the task. With whom is the IRMT sharing the information? Are they sharing within their team or outside of themselves? And the discussion there was that seemingly should be both agencies coordinating and understanding resources with each other but also each agency has their own connections within their sectors of expertise. So they should consider both sharing within and also sharing out. And then separate from that, there was a thought, is there a need for the parenthesis portion of funding and financing to define the word financial? So diving in, you have the interagency resilience management team, should monitor and share existing and available flood resilience fin resilient financial resources with the funding and financing to support local, regional, and statewide initiatives. Uh, first, can I suggest that we consider a revision similar to recommendation A, where it says the CR should direct the IRMT, I think is what we landed on, to provide or to monitor and share it. Okay. The Chief Resilience Officer should direct the IRMT to monitor. To monitor. Are we and comfortable with the word monitor? I don't like the, the passive nature of monitoring because that allows someone to just say, hey, we monitored it, but what did you do about it? Where share is more active, that's implying that you need to do something. Because if they're not monitoring, what are they doing? Isn't that implied? They used to provide. That's a little, that's a little stronger. Provide to provide it. Okay. And then, in terms of the question to whom, I think all we had to whom identified if we want to fall back to that. You want to get back to A for a second? Yeah. You want the same, you want to start off with the same group? We'll see how it works. We'll how it works. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So directing attention to the what's in parenthesis, funding and financing. There's a question under attack. Do you, know, you need both of those words? When we have a parenthesis, it kind of stops us in the flow. So is there a better way to make sure that's in there? Do you want to just say funding and financial resources? So you're saying removing the first financial and then removing the parentheses? Yeah, if that's what you're meaning. So um, what is it that they're... Uh, what about saying existing and available funding and financing resources to blah, 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 to support local, regional, and statewide resilience initiatives? Okay, so um, to provide, right after the word provide, we would type funding and financial. Existing and available. Funding and financial resources, and then move the resilience part to the end work in front of the initiative. Okay. So I think you know for us, you know, one of the things that we have to see come out of all of this is that. We'll have a more creative approach to paying for resilience work. Um, there are dedicated sources, but there are also other ones that could be applied. And thinking about those opportunities, I think it's going to be a could be a key benefit of this team. How's it sound? Does existing and available get you? You were talking about kind of looking at needs and innovative. If it's existing and available, you could put existing, available, and emerging. Because it the the timeliness of positioning either the bigger unit of government or the small unit of government to access the money is directly related to how the subrecipient contract shows up. So if if Virginia gets a big wedge of money from a federal agency, the clock's ticking on it. And so if, if you are not aware that that opportunity, we can do a better job making sure that people understand the time that's available for accessing the resources. Because in many times, the window will have closed before those that needed it even found out that it's available. So the resources here money, I think it's always about the money. Right. I mean, there's grants and loans available out but, there. I mean, are you giving money to state legislators and other? Yeah, right. That that that, that probably gets wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That might get their attention. <laughs> well, are we providing information? I figured it's that. So that's, that's what that's, I have in mind too. Like we're not the IRMT is not going to be providing like the actual. I, that's what I want to. Yeah, yeah it's, it's information that I think making yeah. legislators aware of that. You know, yeah. Yeah. Of information inter, regarding informing like you know their deliberations about potentially identifying new sources of, of funding. So, do you want to change it to financial and funding information? So instead of an emerging, provide information uh, on yes. So I'm just going to point that emerging. So basically, we're trying to make sure that 
everyone that needs to know about any grants and loans that are available out there are, you know, so that someone doesn't drive by and have to not know about funding that's out there. That's all we're, we're trying to create a catalog of available resources. So emerging is a little bit confusing, right? Because it's either there or it's not. I mean, <laughs> could resources be strategies? That's a really good point, too. Because even though you're not providing an actual dollar, you could say, here is a model for you to implement. The, yeah, I think the strategy may work because many times in this space, we will know that there's federal legislation that's passed. So you know the money is coming. So it become, that becomes the emerging component of it. But Virginia can't act on it until they actually receive it. And then they've got to develop the program rules around it. And, and positioning for the lower units of government to know that it is coming helps. Okay, that's what you mean. That's what I mean by that. Yeah. Check out your purpose. Establish an understanding of the financial resources to develop a financial strategy. <laughs> <laughs> that's Could you could you say that a resource is part of a strategy? Like, would the word strategies cover resources in this case? I think you're talking about like sources of maybe it's emerging available and emerging sources of funding and financial resources. Right. Like, come on, the, the storm act. How many years did we right. all know that was coming? Right. And we have not positioned well to avail local governments avail themselves of it. And then that would be good. Good. For, you, you're okay, just add the word strategies back in after financial, and then we need to work with it a little. To provide information on existing, available, and emerging sources of funding and financial strategies to local government. That, that's, that's getting strong because it, it really gets to that core function. What we're trying to do is the illumination of choices. Mm -hmm. So let's read it one more time and then you tell us if you want to say anything more or move on to the next one. The chief resilience officer should direct the interagency resilience management team to provide information about existing available and emerging sources of funding and financial strategies to local governments, state legislators, and other official entities to support local, regional, and statewide flood resilience initiatives. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, if just consider one thing is to split it into two sentences, if you'd like, you could put a period where the cursor is now um, after financial strategies and then say something like uh, these should be provided to. Or are you okay to keep it long? Who's English major in the room? Yeah. Anyone online? Is this okay? Is this? We'll keep going. It sounds like it's, it's good. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, hey. recommendation D. For this one, just three comments during the task discussion. <clears throat> one was to add the phrase related to flooding after the word needs. 
Another question was, is this geared toward planning or project implementation? And the other discussion was awareness surrounding the differences between public and private projects. Is everyone okay to add the word related, the phrase related to setting after the word needs? You type that in there. I have just a quick English suggestion. <clears throat> so they're putting related to flooding after needs, but it's before needs because then it's specifically kind of stuff that comes after that. Make it the confusion. Different financial flood related needs. Yeah. Or flood related financial needs. To make it the adjective. Mm -hmm. So, what are your thoughts about this one? Does it look as good as it is? One of the kind of general deficiencies that I'm constantly in bumping into this space, and, and I'm going to call it the, the life cycle of the financial needs. And then we can figure out if we need to incorporate that. You, every project does have a life cycle. It means that there's an award that's given. Um, you have to have some kind of structure that allows for the money to flow wherever it's going to go. You have to have some kind of structure that relates to when the money is going to flow. Is it reimbursement based? Is it advanced draw? That aspect of the life cycle of money that moves through to do this kind of work, it is not well understood because there's not a lot of people in the space that are having to actively manage the life cycle of money all the way through. And if we don't talk about it is an extremely complicated financial system when you're talking about the life cycle of start to end. And I don't know how to describe it other than calling it the life cycle. And Sean, maybe you got some thoughts on it because you, you are the recipient of my constant calls to you talking about this is complicated stuff. I mean, it, whether you're talking on grants or you're talking on loans or both, it, it, we're, we're missing the, the, the most important aspect out of this. What would you call the most important aspect? It is the awareness of how complex and complicated moving money through this space to different units of government. Because most people incorrectly assume if you have a grant that a magic truck shows up to your front door and you open the trunk and there's boxes of money that come out. That is not how it works. Get back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the, band, okay. the other piece to this, and I'm just gonna just parallel it to and then there was a press release this week about lead line replacement in water systems. So the model forever was the public utility was responsible for water lines up to the water meter, house is responsible for the water meter into the house. But it does you do no good to replace the lead line to the meter and leave the lead line into the house. Mm -hmm. So the federal government has come out and said, oh no, one, here's a bunch of money, two, you got to replace the whole line. And that just had a whole big legal, like now you're giving money to private people, um, right. et cetera, et cetera. So that same thing happens here where you have money and there's a different you know, set of laws for giving money to a local government 
and the local government is going to perform work on property that it owns versus now all of a sudden you're doing work on property that may be privately owned, but maybe there's a public benefit. You know, there's a number of questions. And I, part of this recommendation was flow of money, but also getting those questions answered mm -hmm. as opposed to looking at, you know, land crumbling into the water and trying to figure out the legal question. So th I think this is also capturing that as, as written. Or not? It, <laughs> what you're, you know, you understand it because you live it every day. I understand it to live every day, but the majority of people reading it won't are not privy to the knowledge you just gave. So we we do need to do a little bit more to. So yeah, I mean, there's a financial need, like, but then there's this frustrating. All of a sudden, people are asking, you know, can we resolve that as mm -hmm. part of a. Yeah process based. Yeah. Then like the, the financial need people really how much money do we need to implement projects? That's a financial need. But needs to improve the flow of money, what the challenge is, that's a difference. Right. That, but there are things that like stop that. Yes. And they're just all of a sudden the plethora of questions. I I was looking at it before you said that when I read that, I, I didn't really know what financial needs meant. But when I look at the purpose, I think I understand it. That you're really talking about limitations to implementing. Right. Yeah. So it's more than just money, it's everything else, the process and, and all of that. Yeah. We don't say that. cycle about that. Yeah. Like, needs need an obstacle. You know, I think some of these, you know, you're talking about questions uh, that need answering. I think we also have questions that we don't even have already been asked yet. Yeah. We don't even know about them. We keep yeah. I keep hearing process. Do we want to add the needs, processes, and obstacles? I get it. Like the need to obtain and then spend them to go through that life cycle to get it and then actually use it. Is that more of the recommendation than understanding like every two years what is how much how much money do we need for floaters? Many times you don't even get the money. Right. Because you got to spend your own money first. And so it, it is it is a process thing of how money moves through the entire project cycle, including awarding of the grant, spending of the money, financial auditing and reimbursement process. It's it's and, it's it's the true life cycle of money. And what is it you want to do with that life cycle here? Because that life cycle exists, right? What is it you want to do in this recommendation with that life cycle? You want the where I see there could be some improvement with it is whoever is giving out money needs to have some like introspective look at their own rules and processes to understand whether or not they have self created these barriers. Are they even aware that those barriers exist? Because it becomes the rhetoric doesn't match the outcome. So you want to improve. You want to improve the financial or the life cycle of getting money. You want to improve the. It's not getting it. It's. How would you describe it? John? It's, so management of grants okay. is, is difficult. Is that what? Uh, that I mean, is? so the, let's. Yeah. So the you have the money, and then you got to build and complete the project. Mm -hmm. so, so it is that process flow. Is not so it, it should be to identify the different financial needs and sort of. Are you thinking like the whole paperwork reduction act piece? Like the <clears throat> making so the from the start to the end of the project, making life easier for. Yeah, no. it's the rules that the different agencies apply to their money. Maybe another way to say it is, they don't even attempt to apply their own rules if they wanted to manage a grant themselves because they would soon discover, well, this isn't gonna work because we're set up. We have a policy that prevents this from happening or um, we, we require uh, these types of paper but your manual doesn't say that you require those types of paper. 
it's almost as if many of the programs have hidden sets of rules that when you discover the hidden set of rules, you're 80% done with the project. So you're, and you're wanting DCR, Office of Resilience Planning, what's their role in helping with that? I, I don't know if it's their role. What I'm advocating is that. if we do not take a hard look at the programmatic and administrative rules for moving money that that ends up on public projects or private projects, we are swimming upstream. And, and we're working at, at cross purpose. So would it be financial needs and processes? Yeah, financial needs and processes to ensure, um, like it's, it's like to ensure the, the the efficiency and purpose of the expenditure of public money is maximized. Yeah. That, that, so you know, identify the different uh, flood related financial needs and seek to streamline the, the process. Or something. Uh, yeah. Everybody. Okay. You may not be able to streamline the processes, but you need to educate people so they're aware of them, right? so that they can address them. Right? right, help them. Yeah, right. Oh, you could streamline. Right. Uh, so you're asking us to shine a light on the problem. If the money doesn't flow, we're not doing anything. Okay. But is so there the a recommendation for? Like before, besides identifying a problem, is there a recommendation for difference? And that might be out of our control. I think the CRO would be in the, whatever we're called, the IRT would be well suited for the recommendation to encourage any state agency that is providing funding in that resiliency space to look at their rules and make sure that they are doing the best job that they possibly can turning that money over. And that's a really complicated <clears throat> conversation because somebody then thinks you're attacking their program. And that's not what this is about. So, so it could also be, to Phil's point, to provide technical assistance to work through the process. But, you know, at the same time. Right. Not, I mean, because there some of it's federal money. The rules are rules. Yeah, and you're not. But there is a, sometimes there's, Ability to implement in the most efficient way yeah, possible. Learning curve. Right. Oh. To assist in removing obstacles, too. So at the very start of the sentence, instead of identify the different, you could say, should assist in removing obstacles to the different flood related financial needs and processes. Is that what you're saying? Should assist in removing obstacles? Too? A lot of the obstacles are self created. And, and that, I think that has to do with the fracturing of how general government operates where you've got one division that says this is how we, this is what we want to use our money for but then you've got the financial division that handles the reimbursement process and those two things don't don't work well together and they would have no idea the people that are giving the money out that you've got these other problems and gotcha. and the only way that you do that you so know what about so we have identify we got probably strike the different um, as well to clean it up a little bit, but identify flood-related financial needs, processes, and challenges specific to the private sector and public sector, and identify opportunities for streamlining or, like what John was saying, uh, improving service, improving or maximizing. It's in, yeah, improving those processes, right? Removing obstacles. All right, yeah. so what's the list of things we're doing again? So identify the flood related financial needs, processes, and challenges specific to the private sector and to the public sector um, for the purpose of removing obstacles. Just maybe for the and identify opportunities to remove barriers to implementation. Okay. To remove barriers to implementation. 
Do are we comfortable with having this still with the Office of Resilience Planning, or do we, for consistency, do we want it to be the CRO and the IRMT, or does it make sense to leave it? How much work you want, Matt? Uh, I, <laughs> we would all. I think this is broader than. I the think CRO. if you're asking the CRO to ask all of their state agencies yes. to reevaluate their funding yeah. process, then I think so. We're not the uh, CRO. Yeah, the CRO and should direct the IRNT yeah. to identify. There's okay. on the line. I do not know how well. Yeah. You know, Directing the IR, the direct word to coordinate with. We'll get some feedback on that at some point. Well, yeah. we're not. This is this like we collaborate. So some lawyer looks at it and says, We should take direct, we should replace direct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to be consistent, it was collaborate, oh, but in that case, it's just, yeah. 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 we should direct. Oh, we just say we should direct in the direct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so maybe we just have a, separate, a whole conversation on that after we. Yes, there. Are, yeah. Okay, so the chief resilience officer should direct the IRMT for the moment. That's <laughs> we don't have a lawyer. Nobody from the AG's office. <laughs> Put it in one place. Yeah, I'm just a little bit bad. The interagency resilience management team. So this is you've done some really good wordsmithing to get to your meaning. Let's see if your meaning has arrived. Can, um, and should there be some kind of report out element now that we're not piling on Matt's workload? Can you team, it says to identify. After Matt's work energy. So, yeah, that is, yeah the, the report out is probably really important to help illuminate where these problems and challenges reside. Because it's it is everywhere, and but you're not finding it contextualized anywhere. There is no report that identifies, mm -hmm. and so our credit facilities problem that we're dealing with right now, Sean, that is a direct result of state agencies not being able to release money because of their policies. So it it causes us to have to go other avenues because of policies and procedures that are preventing that without the ability to have conversations about we're losing the purpose of why these programs exist. So is it to identify and report on, or is it to, to collaborate on? You're wanting everyone to bring forth what they're, somebody has to mind map it like all those different pieces and figure out where those implementation barriers are and come up with a solution, maybe. That's getting closer because when you read that and you juxtapose it against the purpose, which is spending money on either public or private property, that, that kind of sets it to be able to say there are two lanes that you're walking down here. and Each lane has a different set of rules with it and every agency um, has a different size car or vehicle on the road. And if we don't spend some time identifying how those different vehicles drive up and down the road, we're, we're just driving in the ditch. So I don't, right now your action verb is identify. Do you want it to be more than identify? I think they could make recommendations. Oh, identify. Mm -hmm. yeah. And make recommendations. And, remove, and recommend yeah. opportunities to remove barriers and the implementation. Yeah. So it turned that one to remove. There you go. And you have one identify up above and another recommend down below. Okay. I have another English question. Do you guys want to keep it as private sector and to the public sector, or do you want to make it more? to the private and public sectors. I think it's in my opinion is that it's a, because they're so dramatically different mm -hmm. in the implementation of whatever program, it's important to have 
some it's dramatic emphasis on the right. fact yeah. that they're separate. Okay. They're, they're, I mean, yeah. Sean is right. I mean, we can move money laterally from government unit to government unit all day long with it's no problem. problem, no red tape. Um, the second you start to move into private, the yeah. rule book goes like this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I, I'll read this. And if it's good, we can take a quick break if Sean's okay with that. The Chief Resilience Officer should direct the Interagency Resilience Management Team to identify the flood-related financial needs, processes, and challenges specific to the private sector and to the public sector, and recommend opportunities to remove barriers to implementation. Would that be strengthened by adding grants and loans to give you the correct context around the financial mm -hmm. needs? So that they are money is only delivered through those two vehicles. It's either delivered. Okay. Through a grant or through a loan. So it would we would take out a comma. So you would say to identify the flood related grants grant and loan processes, right? Identify the flood related <clears throat> grant and loan processes and challenges, because the processes and challenges go back to the grant and loan. Is that correct? That's. Okay. Yeah. To take away that other comment as well. Grant and loan processes and challenges. And the grant. And it's not, it's, I don't know if we want to say sector because it's not a sector. It's, what would you say, private, private projects or private property projects and publicly owned projects? Because it, the burden is not the sector. The, the burden is that how you move money, who becomes the beneficiary of the investment. It's specific to the private public, private project and to the public project? Is it about project? Um, the, the entities are receiving the money. Private and public entity. It's not the receiving isn't the problem. It's, it's the um, reconciliation of how you spend the money for that beneficiary and how you document it to request it. Sean would say, would be good private sector projects or private projects? Like you have projects after sector, or do you take sector out and you just put projects? Yeah, I mean, um, your grant and loan processes and challenges, specific to the private. And it's the specific to. Specific to the expenditure? What do you, no. it's the receiver of the grant and loan, what do you call that? Right? The sub recipient. Okay. Grantee, or grantee or grantor relationship. I call them borrower or borrower. You can put all of those. Uh, you can put borrower, sub recipient, grantee, grantor. Uh, is it specific to the private? Well, I think you generically, the uh, challenge is specific to private and public projects. Okay, I can go with projects. To private and public projects. In that case, we won't make the emphasis. We're, we're going to combine that private and public yeah. projects. To private and public, and you get rid of the before private. Yeah. Okay. That so, mm -hmm. The Chief Resilience Officer should direct the Interagency Resilience Management Team to identify the flood-related grant and loan processes and challenges specific to private and public projects and recommend opportunities to remove barriers to implementation. Uh, Is it private projects and public projects? Oh, private projects and public projects, lest someone think that they are combined. Identify the flood related grant and loan. Is it um, the chat? If you're looking not just, well, you have to identify the processes and then the challenges of those processes. Go. Oh. Identifying the challenges in the flood related grant and loan processes. Uh huh. To identify the challenges in the flood related grant and loan processes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Related grant and loan processes specific to mm -hmm. the chief resilience officer should direct the interagency resilience management team 
to identify the challenges in the flood-related grant and loan processes specific to private projects and public projects and recommend opportunities to remove barriers to implementation. Um, or you could, instead of the second and, because there's a lot of ands, you could say, then recommend opportunities to remove barriers. So a comma, then recommend. Do, is it, does it help to illuminate what, if we offer after challenges again in brackets? Because you can have administrative challenges, you can have policy challenges, you can have reimbursement challenges, legal, <laughs> legal challenges. The reason why that's important Look how we just struggled, struggled yeah. to articulate this. And we know more about this than anybody else. We take it out of the room. Nobody's going to know what that means. Make a second sentence then and say challenges may include. And you can list them. For example, challenges. What do you want to use to set up? Legal. Legal. Cash flow, reimbursement, etc. Uh, yeah, and others, and uh, and, there, and others. Group of expenditure. I feel like the more we add to this, the less helpful it becomes. Because they need to figure it out. Too much. Well, it, it is, but if you don't, I guarantee you that whoever is in here in the IRP will have no idea that those challenges even exist with mean, it because they don't do it. Permitting, I mean, look at that. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of things. Right? Right. Uh, um, well, it's yeah, challenges yeah. that are internal to the functional operation and expenditure of those resources, of public resources, because the permitting gets to the external aspect of it. We're talking about the, the internal operational aspect of how the keeper of the money either gives it out or... So maybe for this then, is would it be helpful to add something like direct the interagency resilience management team and engage with the Virginia Flood Resilience Master Plan TAC or affected stakeholders or something else like that to get that kind of input, Louie. I think that's the, the what you're, we're saying. We have these internal processes. The agencies may not know or give them the same weight as the people really trying to use the fund. And so to get information from both sides of that relationship would be helpful to this process, resolving these issues. That's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to say, your process, we don't like it, and this is why. You may not even realize that that's a problem for us. Because if you can address the challenges at the end of the day, you've made government work better. Mm -hmm. You're protecting, you're improving the protection of public health, safety, and welfare, which is at its core of what government is supposed to be doing. Those challenges are placing an undue stress on the ability for all units of government to deliver on their core function. Is there something you want to add to make that happen, or does this capture it? Well, well, I think it's a little, the second sentence is making it messy. Make it happen. Let them walk the journey, figure it out. We'll, we'll still be here to, we'll just be on the sidelines. So we're... <laughs> right. Who is dragon? Our, our meetings of the interagency resilience management team open to the public. <laughs> hmm. I don't know if there's a point by where I'm working with I'm going to go back to Bill's earlier. So remove barriers, but there's also there are requirements. You can't just remove. Any and all requirements. So mm -hmm. there's this notion of right. remove the barrier or provide technical assistance. I don't. I don't. I'm not saying. I'm not recommending that language. About or sort of like assist and understand then, the barriers. Mm -hmm. right. Or recommend opportunities to improve implementation. We're going to strike the last sentence. Are we agreed on that? 
it was suggested, but I didn't think I, concurrence. Okay. I we, think we don't need to have that last sentence. You want to put uh, in the purpose? So actually leave that last sentence there for a second. Okay. It'll be highlighted. Let's we'll, we'll get back to that. And then let's see right above, then recommend opportunities to what did you say? Ben? Improve implementation. Improve implementation. Is improve implementation good uh, enough? Yeah, for, I think that gets the vote. Okay. Obstacles and also to the technical mm -hmm. okay. systems. Yeah. So what I would suggest is we take a break for, let's see, we can take a break till 20 after. And when we come back from that break, each of you give your opinion about whether or not to keep that sentence or what you want to do with it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so stretching, moving around a little bit, you can look at this. When you're thinking about this, you are directing the interagency relationship management team to identify those challenges. Yet then you're also suggesting what some of the challenges are. Is that doing their job for them or is that okay? Would that give better context under the purpose guide? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you could say. Like after the last property, you could put related to and you put all the things underneath of it. Or you could say, that, yeah, these could include these could include and put them there. For examples, include. And then you, instead of the word challenges, you could say examples. Examples of limitations, if you're in Wording consistency and purpose. We use limitations about the example. Example limitations may include. I don't know if it's necessarily limitations because that has that negative frame around it. Uh huh. Okay. Challenges. So or... go back to saying challenges. Okay. Don, how are you, are you, you, I mean, you have to manage these kind of things. How are you with that kind of language? For the examples, defining the examples. Well, just as an English recommendation, we're gonna use the phrase example challenges in the second sentence that seems to be dependent on the first one that we should include challenges. Like, so financial need limitations and challenges. Yeah. Any other thoughts on this recommendation or purpose? And you will have a chance to see it again. Uh, do we have Claire and Kristen back? Any comments from Claire and Kristen? Well, everyone can hear us and we're projecting. As far as I know. We can move on to the next one. Recommendation E. Okay, last one. 
just one comment at the task meeting. It looks like this recommendation recognizes that sticking with the status quo over an extended period of time is not a feasible alternative. So let's see if you like it the way it's phrased. Can we um, replace the assess with implementation? Mm -hmm. Or performance. State agencies should monitor and evaluate the impl implementation of the state's funding approval. Or the performance, what do you think? You said performance. I, I mean, I think success kind of applies, so we're gonna succeed. <laughs> so in that in that same context, a back end of that sentence talks about the short term and long term challenges. Who's mm -hmm. because the you've got the the bigger unit of government that is providing the money, so they have a goal for their program. That they want to push that money out. So, is it talking about the short term and long term challenges for the state agency to implement on their mandate, or are we talking about to address the short term and long term challenges of the person that's receiving that money to do what needs to be done with it? What do you think? Or would you could would you is it the grantor grantee relationship thing again? That that the grantor may have short term and long term challenges on their side of the ledger, and the grantee has short term and long term challenges on their side of the ledger, or the lender and borrower. It's, it's the same thing. There's this relationship between those that have and those that receive. Mm -hmm. Could we get rid of everything after financial mechanisms and just say as appropriate? The highlight. Yeah, I don't think we've really, as a committee, um, or as you know, I, I think some of these issues have been hinted at that these three that we highlight right here, four, three, um, are big issues that really haven't been talked about um, when it comes to the Resilience Master Plan just yet. So highlighting them, I don't know, I just feel like including them here may not be the, the best place to do that. I don't know if we have in the, in the plan, if there's gonna be a chapter on emerging issues, things we'll tackle next time, Things we put in the parking lot that we couldn't get to, but I feel like with these these specifically, I know we we that we tried in the first phase to, to tackle strategic relocation, and that did not um, reach a conclusion. Yeah. We have not really talked about it this time. I support the deletion for the reasons Ben was just mentioning. I don't think it's just a matter of the use of funds, appropriated funds or grants that are gonna propose challenges. The items that are listed there, strategic relocation and infrastructure abandonment, it's more than just money. That There's a coordinated effort that have to go along with each other from a local, regional and state effort. And those are not just about money. Um, which is what this recommendation is centered around. And so I think there's a larger discussion recommendation that might need to be tabled or its own standalone recommendation. Would you, could you, Chris, put part of appropriations coordination and then comma appropriations to kind of draw in that we got to talk and we have to understand where the money's going. <laughs> 
coordination. And to, to that matter, how is appro the appropriations as a process, the grant and loans, we're talking about those in terms of programs? Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm really struggling with this one with infrastructure abandonment being in there. I'm worried that we're going to try to cram too much in this recommendation. Um, there's going to be more. It's going to be more than just about the money. It's going to there's going to be legal challenges. There's going to be again coordination. Chicken and the egg. Is it strategic location? relocation that's kind of driving it? Is it infrastructure abandonment that's driving it? Is it both? Um, I don't think it's just all about the use of funding. Could we say implementation of the state's funding and financing programs and get rid of including coordination appropriations and grant and loan program? And then I still think getting rid of that last sentence is would clean it up and I think make it more directly related to what the purpose is over there on the right. Mm -hmm. So cut that and then also cut the last sentence and make it succinct. Go ahead That's my it. recommendation. We can look at it. We cut it such as I think, I think it was Kurt that brought it up. Like the Evaluating the funding that we're dealing with now, mm -hmm. are we addressing short and long term challenges? And then considering what else, and maybe it's not financial to your point, but other strategies are needed for the long term, longer term challenges? Well, I mean, I think if we get rid of, if we say consider additional financial mechanisms as appropriate, um, then I think that that yeah, keeps it appropriately broad because I think you know if we're just saying we only need to consider new things for longer term challenges that presupposes that we uh, successfully dealt with all the with the current or the, the near term sure. challenges and and I would say that, that we haven't actually Absolutely. done that as well right so um, but is it is it then is it the Commonwealth short term and long term challenges because those would be very different than you know, city, county, or town short term or long term challenges. Oh, I think a big picture view of what the Commonwealth means. Um, but yeah, I know I think your your point there is good, Louie. Um so was there a change from that? Well, I, make? I think it's kind of inherent that to recognize again the relationships between the big state government administrative arms. And so if you talk about the commonwealth, to address the commonwealth short-term and long-term challenges, you're giving the due respect to the biggest unit of government does have a say in this. And they will get to define what short-term and long-term challenges ultimately mean, whether or not they mean that in the context of the state challenges or these challenges that are faced by local government. So do you think like adding after challenges, challenges for localities, uh, you know, regions and the Commonwealth would that be that stays consistent because that that shows up in one of the one or two of other recommendations where we recognize that kind of stair stepping of, of the different units of government that are involved with it. Uh, four localities. Yes. Thank you. And do you say state's funding versus Commonwealth funding? That's the correct title. Yeah. We're just trying to think about. Well, I mean, I think Commonwealth, you know, I don't default to using that term. I mean, or we could just say. Um, <laughs> you could say. Just say funding and financing programs. Relevant funding and financing programs. I don't know. I mean, because we're we're looking at kind of what's on the table, what we have available right now across the board. We're trying to measure the scale of the challenge and see does the number on one side match the number on the other side. And the number of, uh, in terms of available resources, that's federal, that's state, that's local, 
other things, private sector, you know, non-governmental funding. Um, you know, having someone, this group, uh, the agencies, or maybe this is another one of those CRO and the IRMT thing where taking a big picture look at all the resources that are available, what's working, what's not, and then working at the appropriate level to identify potential new funding or finding financing mechanisms that's you know appropriate. So the look good as is? Along the same lines of what you were just saying, is, is effectiveness a better word to make the increase in the second term? Because you can, you know, you may have implemented it right, but, but uh, right. Well, that, that may lead to different. Mm -hmm. so we've created now an imbalance between FE talks about programs, but the purpose talks about products. Products are not programs. So we may need to say products and services, financial products and services to address immediate long-term challenges. And then our products and services, can they be encapsulated in programs? Or state-directed funds? Or, or that? The effectiveness of state-directed funds to address? That would be on the purpose, right? Yeah. Sorry. Oh, the purpose, not not the recommendation. Yeah, so. Oh, oh so, sorry. Okay. Because I think it is still on the purpose side, products and services are interrelated, that, that you got to have both, because products mean one thing and services mean something different. But you get both of them, now you've got a better control of your financial conversation. Did you say fund and financial products, or would funds be sufficient? Well, I'll, maybe I'll give you this example, Sean, see how you, you respond to that. I know that you all have been looking at with the revolving loan program of how to consolidate the collection of loan payments. And that would be kind of a state-sponsored service. So the product might be the loans that are distributed to all these different local governments. And the service is, well, we're going to create um, one place that collects all the loan payments. So that, that's what I that's what I mean when I talk about the difference between financial products and services. We have any, I mean, the services the services need to go in or not? I, I don't know. Yeah. Um... I'll try. I think the long language on is important for you all because this is probably more and end up in y'all's wheelhouse related to the adaptive management for states directly products and services or whatever you think it needs to be called. Well, I think fund just call it that. that. I was to say we need to have financial products and services because not include funding. Okay. Funding or funds? Well, funding and funds is a financial product. Grants are a financial product, loans are financial product. Yeah, yeah. I, I so state directed funding. How that's delivered through program or product. Uh, programs fine. If you get program and products and they're consistent with the other side where we've said yeah. financing programs. So utilize adaptive management for state directed funding programs to address the immediate and long-term challenges of what? But it, funding programs mm -hmm. to replace that clause. Yeah. Okay. What do you get rid of the max? I mean, I think we're trying to capture, right? The money went out there, did it go to the right spot, and did it do what we intended to do? And do we need to make adjustments?
Are you ready to read it out loud? So you got the purpose now? Utilize adaptive management for state directed funding programs to address the immediate and long term challenges of flooding. And then your recommendation. State agencies should monitor and evaluate the effectiveness of funding and financing programs to address short-term and long-term challenges for localities, regions, and the Commonwealth, and consider additional financial mechanisms as appropriate. Should there be a comma after Commonwealth? Um, is it state agencies, or are we going back to? <laughs> well, I think. We would go back, but then we can have the that would lead into the question of are we using the word direct? With the simplification of this recommendation, there's no mention of flood related. Of flood funding. Does anybody feel that it needs to be in here? I and mean, we know it's the recommendation within the coastal resilience. Right. Well, it's on the purpose. Yeah. State. Flood related challenges, then? Um, in the reckon. Yeah. In the reckon, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Seems yeah. pretty good. And just for consistency with some others, the locality, regions, and the commonwealth. Is the regions specific to a regional government entity or just I think it, because you won't get an answer for that because every state program has a different definition for what regions mean? Correct. Because I think in another subcommittee we will we refer to the planning district commission. So trying to align some of the terms, but not. Well, we could say local governments because in code that refers to the big definition cities, of counties, government. towns, service districts. That's the big district. Right. That, that would be I, think big, that, yeah. I think we use local government in the right. So for, lo for local governments and the Commonwealth. If, um, if you just say local government, you really should cite the correct code provision because 50% of the people read it and think they mean the small definition of local government, and the other 50% will think you mean the large definition of local government. And without citing the right code, you've given them no context. Do we define local governments? We have a definition section in the plan. We do have a definition of key terms. That would be part of the mirror. Yep. You know, oh, okay, yeah, we'd also pull in PDCs, but it's also all of the authority. Water about all the campers and take the mirror. Everybody. Political subdivision. Local government to key terms. You can. Local government. Thank you. Okay, definitely. Mm -hmm. Can you put the little uh, footnote symbol behind it to remind that we got to go back and figure out if you've got that term local government showing up in these other recommendations? Mm -hmm. um, if you put that footnote on it, it'll at least be consistent that people need to go back and look and see what does that definition mean. So the footnote would not be necessarily for us to include in the recommendation. It would be just a kind of note that well, it's it, for consistency purposes. It's for consistency purposes. You because, should take a look at that. No, I'm just saying, how do you want it? Because it's in, if you will, it is defined in the definition section, but you were leaving it to chance that the reader goes and looks it up in the definition section. If you have the little notation, kind of a number one in the brackets up there, you're calling it out for a very specific reason. And that may be the footnote. Please see the definition for, for what this means. And that would occur in a few places throughout the plan. So do we do it just the first time that appears? Right? I don't know. That just If you leave it that way, you will leave it to chance. Well, this is not hopefully going to be read right on its own, right? So there is a larger context that for the whole plan that these recommendations will be a part of. 
And well, I but mean, then it becomes inconsistent because if you have said that in other sections you include local governments and PDCs, by default you've used a small definition for local governments and included other municipal subdivisions outside of that. Well, that's, I mean, but I think that issue gets beyond this, the scale of like where our discussion is today and looking at this one issue, right? That's an issue that that's a, DTR yeah, yeah. can go back yeah. in and they can look at the like where, where they are just to make sure that we're consistent. Yeah, but somebody needs to look at it. Right. We, we, we have a, a drawn a big definition of PDC, so it sounds like we need to make sure mm -hmm. local governments are defined for the more. Yeah. So that could be defined early in the plan. Or the right. But if you state. split it, you're using the little definition. Okay. Because it, there are two statutory definitions for it. Yeah. I mean, okay. And um, if we have statutory. There's like the recommendations. We don't want to be using local governments and planning district commissions. And in another recommendation, just say local government. That's mm -hmm. Yes. We need to establish these. Okay. You know, we are both, we've all voted these out. I mean, I mean part of the Robert's rules, you can amend. And so maybe we will do the amendments to okay. amend that language. Okay. To get voted out between the instances. We've been trying to catch it, but it's hard. Yeah. And so just to be clear, within this room, you prefer this wording versus listing the PDC separately. Or do you have a, if we're choosing, is there a preference? Selfishly, uh would it be yeah. listing the yeah. PDC? <laughs> sure. but... And if people think that it's already exactly that's right. Okay. That's why the, the code reference every chance you have clarifies it. That is the big definition. Okay. I think in the in the earlier, I'll double check, but in the earlier two meetings, I believe we used the PDCs in there most of the time. So um, we'll double check that. Well, it's also the context of how you're talking about because you talk about PDCs, but in this one, it's specific to the definition. Okay. Okay. So we're, we're good with this. So you other can... than we need, so this recommendation had state agencies should. So do we just talk about the topic as you know here, exactly. and then that will also relate to the prior one. And you have, I think your your lead organization, if you will, at the start of each. For the most part, was the um, was the team. So we can we'll go back and look at them. So you, in general, you were using interagency resilience management team along with the CRO there. Mm -hmm. So is that for this too, or is this just for state agency? Mm -hmm. it may be. So we have seen, let's just read through all five. Okay, and then we can discuss. Uh, we'll come back to this one more. Yeah. Well, maybe. <clears throat> So I'm going to read it out loud. Take a look. At, we're going to take a look at the recommendation of the purpose. And this is our final time to make the language the way you want it before voting occurs. The chief resilience officer should direct the interagency resilience management team to provide timely financial tools and reports to local governments, state legislators, and other official entities that clearly demonstrate the immediate and midterm costs of inactions to address flood resilience and inform appropriation in a period. So that topic of, can we actually use the word direct in this? I went back to the house bill that created the IRMT and the team is required to advise the CRO. So I'm wondering if we should switch this language to make the CRO request this information from the IRMT instead of directing it or asking the CRO to ask for it. I consult with. So should request or? Yeah, you could just pull up one for one. Should request the IRMT to provide timely. So um, one English question, the word that, so an other official entity that clearly demonstrate, it's not the entities demonstrating, it's the financial tools and reports that demonstrate, right? 
So should that word that become two? Which that are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just um, let's just make sure that we're grammatically correct throughout here, and I'm not sure that we don't want too many twos, but provide timely financial tools and reports to local governments, that state legislators, and other official entities that clearly demonstrate the immediate and midterm cost of an action to address budget plans and inform appropriation. So you could put the whole phrasing of two local governments, state legislators, and other official entities at the last part of the sentence. And I think grammatically that becomes correct. Let me demonstrate. Right. So the chief resilience officer should request that the interagency resilience management team provide timely financial tools and reports that clearly demonstrate the immediate and midterm costs of inactions to address flood resilience and inform appropriations to local governments, state legislatures, and other official entities. Mm -hmm. No, you're providing it too. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's go back. Undo. Period, these reports should. Mm -hmm. That could make it more clear. If you put a period there, these reports should, or mm -hmm. schools and reports. So, these reports. Is that better than before? Yes. Okay. One more time. The chief resilience officer should request that the interagency resilience management team provide timely financial tools and reports to local governments, state legislators, and other official entities. These tools and reports should clearly demonstrate the immediate and midterm costs of inaction to address flood resilience and inform appropriation. And then the purpose. Explain the flood consequences of doing nothing at the local, regional, and state level. Are you comfortable voting on this language? Okay. Do we have Wheeler? Are they online still? They're still online. Okay. We'll go on to B. Then Claire and Kristen, if you can pop in, just say anything that you'd like. Um, as we're moving forward here, just to make sure we have your input. So for B, the Commonwealth's economic development enterprise, including public and private, should ensure that businesses, government officials, citizens, and other stakeholders are aware of the economic benefits of developing and implementing Virginia-based flood resilience products and services and exporting them to an emerging global market. Did you including up there as a parenthetical expression? The Congress Economic Development Enterprise. Oh, the there you go. Mm -hmm. And the purpose ensure stakeholders understand the positive financial potential of investing in resilient solutions. Everyone feel comfortable with this one? Third one, the chief resilience officer should direct the interagency resilience management team to provide information about existing, available, and emerging sources of funding and financial strategies to local governments, state legislators, and other official entities to support local, regional, and statewide flood resilience initiatives. There's a tricky direct again, one. Yeah. Got a request again? Yeah, I like request. Yeah, that's good. Good suggestion. Mm -hmm. 
But you know, oh. So the chief resilience officer should request that the interagency resilience management team provide information about existing, available, and emerging sources of funding and financial strategies to local governments, state legislators, and other official entities to support local, regional, and statewide flood resilience initiatives. Okay. And the purpose? Wait a minute, hold on. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, if we are asking the CRO to request from the interagency and team about resources for funding, have we now limited to just resiliency initiatives? So I'll, I'll give an example of the context. And so, Bill, this will probably be more for you. You all have got CDBG funds that you all have a federal directive for how that money needs to be used. In some coastal states like Louisiana, they use CDBG funding for resiliency initiatives, but that is not a priority of how Virginia uses it. So have we, by default, limited it to resiliency initiatives, which would allow you to say, we don't have any of that, when you could have that if you chose that as something where you wanted to spend your money? So, Louis, I think... Um... <clears throat> I had the same thought earlier that if we focus on resilience funding as opposed to funding for resilience, those are two different things. And I think having statewide or the flood resilience initiatives at the end, I, I think that helps address this because it, to me, this says what are the money, what's mo money on the table and what can be used to support resilience? Right, which is what I'm, which I'm getting to. So that's really the question. Does everybody agree that that's what that says? That any that every state agency, when the request comes, you need to look into your program buckets of money, and you have to say yes, these buckets could be used for resiliency initiatives, but they currently are not being used for it. Versus the alternative of saying these are the only programs that we currently have that are being used for resiliency work. That's what I had in mind. I mean, I think part of this is going to be worked out between the CRO and the, yeah. the team, you know, and how those discussions play out. But I, mean, I guess my point is that we emphasized and made that clear that this is saying look across all your buckets of money. You want to throw potential in there somewhere? You have a merging, but that's different, right? Yeah. Than it's really a re it's a reprogramming question. That can support local, regional, and statewide. That that helps because then it kind of puts an emphasis on reimagine mm -hmm. how you are can. using your current mm -hmm. money now and can it be utilized in this resiliency space? That can support. And now it becomes a policy choice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Read it one more time. The chief resilience officer should request that the interagency resilience management team provide information about existing, available, and emerging sources of funding and financial strategies to local governments, state legislators, and other official entities that can support local, regional, and statewide flood resilience initiatives. Um, Okay. Does that pan could relate again to that series of entities, or it could relate to the funding? Is it the difference between can't using the word can for could? Can is can is more declarative. You've got to explain why your bucket of money can't be used for this, where could is optional. There's your question who's the subject? Is it funding or is it? I mean, I guess my question is it's confusing who the subject is, whether it's the funding or whether it's the entity. Um does anyone have suggestions on how to fix that, possibly with two sentences or? Mm 
you could put a period of entities and then you could say the funding programs could support or something like that to be able to split it. So you keep that emphasis on the emphasis on is on the buckets of funding. And then the second part becomes, what do you want to do with the money? We want to use the money for this purpose. You say like this should include dedicated funds as well as other funds that can support. Okay, there you go. All right, so where, where we want to put it? Um... So this funding could include, did it say it again? Could include, so what's the edit? Let's say these should include dedicated programs and other programs that can support. So these this support. should include I was going to say, or you can just go emerging solutions that or emerging sources of funding and financial strategies that support local, regional, blah, 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 resilience initiatives to local government. Just move it up. That's fine, too. Okay. Yeah, right after financial strategies, you can grab that. That. Yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Grab that. <laughs> Put that in front of it. And we're dropping it where again? So yeah, financial strategies that. Paste. Type that and paste it. Okay. And then get rid of that last, the last two words there. Yeah, there we go. And is the two correct to local government? Let's see. The chief resilience officer should request that the interagency resilience management team provide information about existing, available, and emerging sources of funding and financial strategies that can support local, regional, and statewide flood resilience initiatives to local governments, state legislators, and other official entities. Information about Statements that provide information to local governments and separated from not sure. put this up to provide information to. Ah, either way, either it's a long clause. That might work. So, if we took the two local governments, state legislators, and other official entities. And we put it right after information. That might make it the most clear. So grab that, put that right after information. The wordsmithing part is important so that the meaning is kept, right? So the chief resilience officer should request that the interagency resilience management team provide information to local governments, state legislators, and other official entities about existing, available, and emerging sources of funding and financial strategies that can support local, regional, and statewide flood resilience initiatives. You got it. And the purpose, establish an understanding of the financial resources to develop a financial strategy for implementation. And you can vote on this language later. All right, moving on to D. The chief resilience officer should direct the interagency resilience management team to identify the challenges in the flood related grant and loan processes specific to private projects and public projects, then recommend opportunities to improve implementation. So again, we would have the requests information from or requests that uh, the interagency resilience team identify. Should we request, is that the word we used? Yeah. Okay. We've been saying request that. To request that. The Chief Resilience Officer should request that the Interagency Resilience Management Team identify the challenges of the flood related grants and loan processes specific to private projects and public projects, then recommend opportunities to improve implementation. And then the purpose. Understand the financial needs, limitations, and challenges to implementing resilience on public and private property. Example challenges may include administrative, legal, cash flow, reimbursement, proof of expenditure, and others. Correct. And everyone can vote on that one. Yes. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the verbal. <laughs> Helpful. Okay, last but not least. 
state agencies should monitor and evaluate the effectiveness of funding and financing programs. Funding and financing pro or financial. Did we use financial before? I think financing is fine. Okay. State agencies should monitor and evaluate the effectiveness of funding and financing programs to address short-term and long-term flood-related challenges for local governments and the Commonwealth and consider additional financial mechanisms as appropriate. Sound good? I don't think we need the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth? Yeah, we don't, I don't think okay. so. Then the purpose. Utilize adaptive management for state-directed funding programs to address the immediate and long-term challenges of flooding. Okay. Everybody take a deep breath. You've finished these. Are we leaving state agencies? Or is that another? Okay. I like the idea of the interagency, but... <clears throat> So we're recognizing then that all of these actions will really not be taken in general by state agencies, but through the team. Not on this one. Yeah, I think this is actually but, kind of the exception, right? Because this is one we're actually asking to, or suggesting to the agencies themselves, but you should do this and we're going to ask you about it. Okay. So should the CRO request that state agencies do this? Um, we have other recommendations that just say state agency. Okay. Right. That's a good question. So, um, otherwise, every recommendation might say the CRA. The, the state agencies are evaluating a long term for their own, right? Not others within the agency. Okay. Okay. You're comfortable with this then? So, mm -hmm. do you? What you just said about do you need to put effective stuff their funding and financing programs? Yeah. Or of it. Of the, or its state agencies should monitor and evaluate the effectiveness of their funding and financing. Yeah. So how do we know they're doing this? So it's a recommendation that comes from the plan. And report such to the CRO at the end, or to the IRT, or something like that. Monitor, evaluate, and report to. So that might be a question on some other recommendations as well. How are you monitoring? How are you or someone looking to see the results of the recommendation? Is that a global discussion in the? So when we say state agencies here, this type of, uh, of uh, requirement, we're talking about the IRMT, the representation of the IRMT, I would think. I guess in this case, Matt, you're saying that this is in general rather than just through the IRMT. Yeah, I'm just like in the other prior recommendations, we have a responsible party that is taking action, and a lot of times we're providing service to another entity. And so, mm -hmm. in this one, there is no two of uh, who's this going, mm -hmm. monitoring, evaluating, well, is it staying internally, is it going externally, how is this being? So another way of writing this would then be if we wanted to have it consistent with the others would be to have the CRO would request that the IRMT report on the effectiveness of their funding and financing programs, their agency funding and financing programs. Right. I think it's right. right. And that would, I mean, there's an implicit kind of mm -hmm. sub, you know, in there that says, you're going to need to do the monitoring and evaluation to actually do the reporting on the effectiveness. So start the whole right. sentence. Start it all with. So the, the chief resilience officer did request that the interagency resilience management team uh, mm -hmm. 
report on the effectiveness of their agencies funding the financing programs. And does that cover all the agencies that you need to? Good question. I don't know who's on the IRC. Yeah. Who's on it? It includes. Right now, what's the rest of that sentence? Let me do that. ECR, VDEM, Energy, DQ, Forestry, DGS, Health, Port. Historic Resources, App, CCD, Transportation and Wildlife Resources, BMRC, VRA, ODOI, and others as appointed. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> it's pretty good. Okay. I don't, are we missing anybody that's uh, distributing funds? So the suggestion was that actually to, was to say that the team should report on the effectiveness of their agency's funding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their agency. Mm -hmm. Not all agencies. They're member agencies. No, the VRA is an authority. So whoever has the uh, funding has uh, organization. Yeah. And he's well, I like it. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I got out of a lot of thought. <laughs> <laughs> to report on the effectiveness of state agency. No, because we want to be of their funding and finances. For yeah, I mean that. Yeah. Probably fine. Don CR, you can do this, right? Well, DRA. So, like, when a lot of times, there's two, for, like, there's a DCR, DRA relationship. Yeah. For a particular program. Mm -hmm. So, the state agency is responsible. You need, some, <laughs> you need something in there. Otherwise, it sounds like it's just the, of the team. Of the team. So, um, the agency runs the program. Right. You are the Team represent. Right. So we could use the word representative. The chief resilience officer should request that the interagency resilience management team representatives should report. No, yeah. not, not the first part of the team, but should report on the effectiveness of who's funding and financing. Is there an individual or member? Relevant. The Commonwealth? The Commonwealth Funding and Financing, financing Program? For participating agencies? Are we talking about the agencies that are represented on the team? Oh, we just don't want to use the word agency. Oh, oh gotcha, gotcha, okay. Do you want to put the state directive in there? I mean, it's not just the RA, right? It's, it's just also, you know, the Port Authority. Or the member. Are the Port Authority on the, you mentioned that? Yeah. Don't they have a fund that they're supposed to administer that could be used for? They do. Yeah. That's kind of the example of people don't know where the buckets of money are. So, so we're talking about the team members. We just don't want to call out the agency. Yeah. I mean, in, in the code language, it says each agency participating in the team shall does it. They use agency. So they're using agency. So you're not off the hook, Sean. <laughs> well, I think that that does bring up an interesting question. Virginia Port Authority is not a state agency. Mm -hmm. They're an authority. But they dole out millions and millions of dollars in this resiliency space. I mean, the way it's structured, they can be appointed. They can, they, be, they can be, but that we have not, most of the recommendations are pointing back to state agencies. They're not pointing back to these other Big definition, a little definition problem. Right. Again. Well, I think that would be why. Yeah. I mean, I. So you started it before with state agencies. That was the original, right? So should we put this? You could just say state funding and financing program, right? Because mm -hmm. that would be yeah, affecting the so. state funding and financing. Yeah. That'd be fine. Okay. Yeah. That, that would hold people accountable. Well, and I, and I think part of this is, you know, this is all going to be adaptive and iterative, right? So the first time 
there's this is brought up and everything and they issue some sort of report or there's a write-up on it and it's missing something that somebody's like hey what about this one and then the next time around they they add those to the list of funds or programs that they might want to include you know, like you said, people don't know that some of these funds are available, but we're not going to know. That'll, that'll be a discovery process as this plays out over various updates, right? Okay. Got two shifts in there. Um, we're, we're also running low on yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. We have 15 minutes. We still need to do public comments. But maybe between team and high frame. Should not, you're right, the should not be there. The second one, the second should not be there. So just the team, team need to report. Team, yeah. team that you need a time for like how often team report. I, don't, I think we left that open on all this part. Mm -hmm. There's, there's no time. There's mm -hmm. still recommendations. Yeah. We had to look about for the budget process. Yeah. That's the only one. Yeah. yeah, that's the only one really. Okay. Okay. So um are you comfortable with this language to be able to vote? Okay. So I'm turning it over to Wheeler for public comment. There is uh there are no members of the public um, in attendance or online. Okay. All right. So we're gonna move to voting. Does everybody have a smartphone? You can sign into Mentimeter. So if you don't scroll down to the www.menti.com. Or you can QR code it if you'd like here. There's, there's the code. So for the process of voting, we're going to vote on each recommendation one at a time. So Sean, Paul, see when you somebody put forward a motion, somebody second it, and then it'll be recorded vote through Menti. And then we'll do it for the next one. And if there's any discussion where you all want to amend the language, we will need another, we will need a, a verbal vote on any amendments or modifications. And so once you get Mentimeter going, you will find Wheeler will be able to tell that you have Mentimeter going. Make sure you push the thumbs up button. Yep. And we have Thank six you. member organizations yeah, yeah. Uh, today. <laughs> today. We have five in the room, one online. Um, uh, Kristen dropped off. Okay. And so we have four people that have hit the thumbs up. We need two more. And of course, we just have one person voting from for agency. Is that like the right? Yeah. You're good. You're ready? One more thumbs up. So explain to me again what are we voting to which one goes forward or reorganizing from top to bottom to five? So what we're voting on in a moment will be so here's how this process will work. Sydney will be screen sharing the recommendation as you finalize it today, and you're voting to put that forth to the tax. The larger tack. Right. So, are we saying there will only be one that goes forward out of oh, the five? Oh, no. All five. All five. So all, 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 that are, all that are approved. We're just going A through E. There is no top number one priority. Right. So, you're you're putting forth it's five. Just five right update. Well, that's all we have is five. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's it. Okay. So, why would you vote on? They're all going. You're voting on you each one. You need to vote them out. Of subcommittee to go to the full. Right. So, so can we just motion to vote all five, and we don't have to go through and do this? Well, this is the only one of the few things I get. <laughs> so, is that a motion to make a motion uh, in in a, uh, a ball. on a plate? A slate, it's a plate. Is it going to mess you up? Uh, I mean, <laughs> for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. it, it's really, it is a really quick process. We oh, just yeah. go one at a time. Okay. And that way it's recorded that each of you. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So everybody's in. Everybody's in. Besides that, you have to vote on your favorite flavor of ice cream first to practice. So a couple practice questions. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Looking for six responses. Drafting the thumbs up. No, we're going to do the thumbs up. We have an overwhelming vanilla group with chocolate and strawberry both having one vote and vanilla having four. Every committee is different. Now we have the, the this is a similar question to how you would vote whether your options are support, not support, or abstain. So do you prefer to have a dog over a cat?
This is very much of a pro dog uh, group. Okay. Does need one more vote? Oh, there's a one do not support. <laughs> <laughs> so here you can pick which organization you are presenting or representing. And we have all six in there. Great. And then this is up to you, sir. So we're taking each one up individually. We have a motion to approve recommendation A as written on the slide. So wait. We have to vote, right? You have to take a motion to vote for approve. That's what he's we're doing that. Yeah. For each one. He, he yeah, it's for a motion to approve. I guess I'm asking. I'm sorry, recommend. Um, uh, do we have a motion to recommend recommendation A to the full pack? So our recommendation way. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor, press your button. No, no, not yet. Oh. Just, just. <laughs> All right, so we're ready to vote. Yeah. There you go. Support. Do not support obtain. Do we ask for? I mean, no comment. So it actually all goes through Mentimeter. We did it online before. Okay, but so we can. So I just will say. You just ask. We don't need a. And I guess second. technically, there's supposed to be an off paper discussion after the second, right? Yes. Before we're going we by the second the discussion, with hearing none, please cast your vote in support. Right, look, yes. So the motion to vote. Okay. Do it right. And then we'll. <laughs> We have one more. We need one more person to vote. Not done. Oh, there we go. Uh, all members of the committee voting support recommendation F A. Okay. So, you want to, I mean, so a motion for the vote, so, yeah, or we got a motion to, to recommend oh, recommendation yeah. FB to the full time. I'm a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, press the button. Press the button. Yeah. Or cast your anywhere. One more vote needed. All members of the committee uh, support recommendation FB. Is there a motion to recommend? Oh, I'm sorry. Is there a recommendation or a, a vote? It's supposed to be looking at C, right? Yeah, we're going to get it. Very thing. All right. So do we have a motion to uh, support recommendation FC to the full time? So we'll hear a second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Please okay. enter your vote. All members of the committee vote in support of recommendation F C. Is there a motion to support recommendation F D to the full pack? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, please enter your vote. All members of the committee vote in recommendation of FD. Is there a motion to support recommendation FE as presented to the full pack? So, well, here is a second. Second. Any discussion? 
Hearing none, please enter your vote. Aren't surprised. All members of the committee vote in support of recommendation FB. Very good. So, so we made it through voting. Thank you for working through the process. And it was a little longer for meeting today. Um, after this, some of us have the pleasure of going for another one later <laughs> this afternoon. That is the conclusion of all the subcommittee uh, meetings. We will be sending out the final recommendation text as they've moved out of subcommittee to all of the TAC for their consideration for the TAC meeting. That meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, November 13th. I believe it has a 10 a.m. start time. So hopefully it's on your calendars. Uh, it will be the last and final meeting of the Coastal Resilience Technical Advisory Committee. And we'll be voting as a whole body to put forward these recommendations into the plan and we'll clarify. Look forward to it. any questions on schedule or process moving forward. Well, certainly thank you for everyone's input today. Uh, Matt and Linda Wheeler, thanks for your great assistance on putting the meeting together. Um, as chairman, I'm going to call a journal. Thank you very much. Research, data, and innovation. So we have lunch for everybody because it's a it was a long day for some of you.